Oi friends, today we'll be importing and making the basics of our zombie enemies in Unity. Last few times we made the model, colored it and rigged it and now we're gonna put it in here. Of course this will all be, uh, you'll be able to download all of this on my github, there's a link in the description if you don't want to make this yourself, which I really suggest you do. Okay, so I'll go to my FBX uh, file and in here I have the Lopoli arms and I'll just go ahead and create a new folder for enemies just like that and I'll import my zombie FBX just like that and then I'll get go to the animation folder and I'll create a new folder in there called zombie and uh, I'll go ahead and import the idle and the walk and I'm pretty sure I saved the zombie attack somewhere there it is, so just the zombie attack as well. So three animations, one FBX model, and I also want to go to my textures um, thingy. Where the fuck is it? So just in the materials tab, I'll import the zombie diffuse. Okay, so the, the zombie diffuse is, I think it's 512 by 512, so I'm just gonna set the max size to 512, just so we have that. For the FBX uh, of the zombie, the actual model. I'll go to the materials, click none and apply. For the animation you can uncheck import animation. For the rig I'll go to humanoid and create from this model, click apply. And for the model I'll uncheck import blend shapes, visibility, cameras and lights, click apply. And for the animations finally of the zombie I'll select all of them, I'll go to the rig tab, set that to humanoid and copy from other avatar and I want to comp copy from the zombie avatar. Okay, and then I'll go individually to each one, turn off the materials, uh, so Unity doesn't import them, makes it much cleaner. And I'll also just go to the model tab and import blend shapes, visibility cameras and lights, turned off. Okay, now for the actual animation tab, uh, the idle and or the attack animation, I don't want to loop. The idle animation, I do want to loop, so I'll just click loop time click apply and the walk animation I also want to loop so I'll just apply that. Okay we can finally uh, start assembling our zombie so for it first I will create a new empty object which I will call zombie and um, on the transform I'll just center it for now just like that. I'll go to my FBX uh, zombie model I'll drag it onto the newly created zombie empty object and you can see he has a good avatar and everything's good. Now let's apply the material. So I'll create a new material uh, for the zombie. So I'll just right click material, I'll call it zombie mat, uh, and then I'll just drag it onto the zombie. And in the actual material, I'll go to the base map, click this small icon, and then use the zombie diffuse. I'll also turn off smoothness so he looks normal, at least a little bit. And now we have our zombie model in game. Okay, I'll go to the empty uh, game object and I'll give him a capsule uh, collider. So this is so we can hit him later. If you click this edit collider, you'll see you'll need to edit it a bit. Uh, I think the height should probably be about two. Uh, and that's if the center here is one. Okay, so center one and height two. And you can, uh, you know, lower the radius a bit. I'll go to about 0 0.4 there. Okay, then we'll also need a rigid body which I will uh, set to is kinematic, okay? And then I will also need a nav mesh agent, which is gonna control the AI of the zombie. Everything here should uh, stay pretty much the same. And now we'll need to start moving our zombie. So I'll go ahead to my scripts and I'll create a new uh, script for my enemy, something like that, enemy. And in there, I'll create a new C sharp script called zombie controller and then I'll just drag it onto my zombie and open it up okay in order to move our zombie as I already said we're going to use the nav mesh agent so let's get a reference to it I'll write a private nav mesh agent and you can see it doesn't autofill it that's because we have to be using unity engine dot AI and now it will be nav mesh agent and I'll just call this one agent and set it equal to null Okay, in our private void start, uh, you can go ahead and say agent is equal to get component uh, nav mesh agent. And now it's just gonna get that component from the um, parent or from the transform. Now, 
Again, I like to organize the bits, so I will create a private void get references. And that's where I'm just going to hold all my references, and I can just call that inside of um, inside of start, just like that. Okay. Now, if I want to actually move my zombie, I'll just go ahead and create a new private void um, move to player or move to target doesn't really matter. And then I'll have a private reference here, private uh, transform target. Okay, because that's that's what I'm going to move to. In order to move the agent, you can say agent dot set destination and the destination will be our target dot position okay and i want to do this every frame so i'll just go ahead and say private void update and inside of it i'll just say move to target okay for now we'll just have one zombie and this should work fine just so we can test it out my bad we should set the transform to be serialized field so we can see it and assign it in there in the inspector okay now you can see we have a target so I'll just drag my player to it and I'll take the zombie and just move him somewhere else if I click play you can see we're getting a bunch of errors and it's saying we can't do it on a nav mesh agent that's not on a nav mesh so it's pretty self-explanatory this zombie or this AI doesn't know what to move on he doesn't know what you know this floor is so I can just select my ground I'll go window and then I'll go AI navigation you'll get this new window and you'll want to bake the nav mesh onto it so you can just go ahead and say that this is a navigation static and it's walkable and then you can go to bake and click bake and now if you play you can see that our zombie follows us but there's still a bit of problem so you can see if I just stand still he's gonna just bump into me very very roughly so let's fix that. In order to fix this thing, a very simple, easy way to do it is just by adding on to the stopping distance of the nav mesh agent. So on the zombie, you can see we have a stopping distance and you can just say 2.5, just like that. And now the zombie is going to try and reach the player. Oh, my bad. You can see he stops now and he stands there. If I move, he's gonna move closer again. Maybe two will work better. Yeah, two works better. So now he stops, but we have a problem. He's not facing the actual player. As you can see, I can be behind him and he's not gonna turn onto me. So that's what I want. And he kind of turns very slowly like this, doesn't look good. So let's fix that. So all we can say is just transform dot rotate, or sorry, not rotate, but look at, and then we can just give it the target, which is just the target, okay? And now it's gonna look in that direction. If I click play, you can see that the zombie now rotates much quicker to look at me, even when he's walking. But you can see when I jump, that doesn't work too well. Or if I if I kind of fall down, you'll see him kind of looking towards me to my death. No. So I want to get the direction to the player so we can rotate to it smoothly. So I'll just go ahead and create a vector tree. I'll call it direction. You can just call it dir or something. And it's going to be equal to target minus transform that position. Okay. And here I just want to add target that position and then minus transform that position. So we're now going to get the direction uh, from the zombie to the player. In order to look to the player or the target, we're going to use something called uh, quaternion dot look rotation. So I'll just create a new quaternion called rotation that's equal to quaternion dot look rotation. And now we need to give it the direction to look at. And that's going to be the direction that we just made. And we also need to give it the up vector, which is the uh, vector three dot up, just like that simply. And now we can just apply that to the transform. So transform that rotation is equal to rotation, just like that. And now our player should look smoothly. And I just want to comment this out like this. So we're not using that now. If you click play, you can see he doesn't look that choppy anymore. And he will also not allow me to get behind him. He's always going to rotate. And that's fine. I like it. 
So there you go. That's a very simple way of adding AI. Uh, currently, he doesn't even attack or anything. We'll be adding on to this. But next time, I think we'll be adding the actual animations for the zombie. He, so he looks a bit cooler. Okay. Hopefully, you learned something new. Thank you for watching. And that's it. Okay, now. Bye-bye.